Um, fuck. Neuronymous. Hey fellow neurotics, this is Hal with another fantastic episode of Neuronymous. I am extremely excited. We've got a great show for you today, as always. Well, <laughs> of course it's going to be a great show. Why wouldn't it be a great show? I mean, it's me, right? Uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but <clears throat> uh, as to why it's such a great show. But uh, I, I have to talk about something, and it's been on my mind all week. I miss the fucking Oscars. Because we don't have and because and I and I was so excited to watch them. I was ready to go, rolling, ro- just ready to, to rock and roll and, and get into them and do my Super Bowl thing that I do with the Oscars. And then I realized we no longer have uh, we no longer have basic cable anymore. So therefore, we cannot watch the Oscars. I, I downloaded the ABC, the ABC app. We, you know, I went tried to go in through Spectrum, download the ABC app. We finally got in, and then it says, "Nope, can't do a live stream." Okay. Uh, so I was left to my own devices, basically going on IMDb and looking at minute by minute announcements of of winners, which is absolutely fucking pathetic and I felt horrible. It was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. All right. That <laughs> that's probably going a little bit too far. I mean there are, there have been a lot there's been a lot of shit that's happened to me that's way, way worse than me missing the Oscars. But it was horrible. It was an ordeal as I usually sit would say. Um and I'm going to be honest, I I disagree with a lot of I was I was I was kind of on the fence with a lot of the nominees to be honest. Um one, you know, I, I'm sorry, Black Panther. It's just it, it's 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 not a bad movie, but it's not Best Picture, and it didn't win Best Picture, which is good. It won a lot of the technical awards, which I get. It, technically speaking, it was a fantastic movie. Uh, I I I enjoyed it, but it's not. You know, like I thought, Wonder Woman was the better movie. I thought uh, I thought that was just fantastic. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, that's, you know, there, 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 there have been other superhero movies that I think that have done better that, that should, you know, that should have broken more records than Black Panther. And I, and I get it again. It's, it's, you know, it, it, it was a superhero movie that with a, with, with, with a, 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 a different spin to it, you know, uh, a lot of African theme, African American themes and African culture, you know, I, I get it, and that and this is not me being racist. I'm not trying to be racist, which usually means when people say they're not racist, usually they're being racist. Uh, but that is not my intention. I just didn't think it was. I, I didn't think it was up to par. I didn't think I, I, it was good, but I don't think it was. I didn't think it was the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, that's that's where I stand with it. And then Rami Malek or Rami or whatever the hell his name is wins Best Actor. I'm sorry, but. I, I, I'm, I'm crying foul on that. You know, here's the thing. I don't doubt that he gave a, a great, great performance. I have not seen it yet, so I can't fully say, oh, yeah, that was, you know, it, it, I can't say it was good or bad, okay? I'm going to be fair here. I'm going to be fair. But this is what I do know, okay? Bradley Cooper, I think, should have taken the Oscar. You know, they both played rock stars, singers, what have you. But here's the thing. Bradley Cooper sang his fucking songs. He wrote some of those songs. Okay? Rami Malek lip-synced to those songs. He did not write any of those songs. Okay? You know, and, uh, you know, and just, you know, I, I just think if you're gonna, be, if you're gonna play a singer, learn to sing. I mean, Bradley Cooper had to take singing lessons and learn how to lower his voice, like, a re- at least a register or two to play his character. And he and like I said, he learned to sing. And the and and just the hot, I did get a, I did eventually get to watch the Oscars on my on my Kindle. Um, I downloaded the Hulu uh, app and was able to watch it. 
And you know, I I saw the the scene, not the scene, but the uh, the highlight of the the whole episode. I I gotta say is when Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper sing the shallow. I don't think there there are many, too many people out there that would disagree with me, but them the two of them coming up from the 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 you know from their seats the in the audience and singing that song and just being cheek to cheek to cheek pretty much uh was just absolutely it was euphoric for me like i i watched it and i just i was like a puddle by the time it was over like the the two of them i don't care if he's in a relationship or not i mean i do i mean you certainly need to honor your partner and don't don't cheat on your partner obviously but the two of them have such chemistry on and off screen it's just it's otherworldly it's just it's off the charts man but anyway so i guess rami malek after he won his oscar fell off the stage so and then he got you know paramedics had to be called and blah 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 you know karma that's all i'm gonna say karma it's a bitch anyway and then red uh red book <laughs> <laughs> Green Book won this picture, okay. Um, I haven't seen it, so I can't really comment too much on it. I, you know, I, I, I've heard it's a great movie, and I actually really do want to see it. Uh, I, I want to see Bohemian Rhapsody too, okay. I'm not, I'm not knocking Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm just knocking that Rami Malek took an Oscar for for lip for lip syncing, basically. Um, you know, that's just my opinion. But uh, so Green Book won Best Picture. Um, and I don't know why, but there's this weird, there's this inkling of glee in my, in my heart that the, that the director, uh, is the same guy who put out fair, like, uh, Dumb and Dumber and, uh, Kingpin and There's Something About Mary and Me, Myself and Irene and Shallow Hal. He took home an Oscar. How, 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 did, what world do we live in when that happens? Right? <laughs> anyway, but no, it's, it's, I, I do like movies about culture, you know, different, you know, when, you know, culture clashes or, uh, you know, just when we call out our, our own institutional, ra institutional racism. And then, and I, I, you know, I'm one of, probably, in retrospect, a lot of people bash Driving Miss Daisy. They think it's a racist movie and it was an easy pick for them to pick because Hollywood loves picking movies where, you know, the whole, can we all just get along, you know, theme plays out. Um, you know, I, and I, and I, and I, <laughs> I did watch the Honest Trailers uh, on YouTube for the Oscars, and, you know, they have, they make some good points about, you know, the, the stere some stereotypes, and, you know, I guess the family of, of the, of the, of the character that Mahershala Ali, who won the Oscar, supporting actor, Oscar, is, it, it's weird. He won the Oscar, s skipped a year, and then he won it again. You know, he won it the first time for for Moonlight, which I still detest. Uh, Adam Scott McConkey, who I had on here uh, on New Year's Day uh, for our, the puppy episode, uh, he he will tell you just how much I detest that movie. I just I just think it's 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 just a pretentious, like boring film you know i like la la land better i'm sorry i mean and i hell i liked you know i if you know if we're gonna if we're gonna pick a movie about that deals that dealt with racism um that year hidden figures was nominated for best picture i like that movie better than the moonlight okay so it has nothing to do with you know race or anything like that okay i you know i you know i, I just i'm just pointing out you know that anyway Mahersha Ali won for Moonlight and he won for for Green Book and uh and I love Viggo Mortensen I've loved him even before Lord of the Rings I liked him when he was in the movie A Perfect Murder when he was having the affair with Gwyneth Paltrow and Michael Douglas won you know it was, like, it was basically Dial M for Murder it was the remake of that uh and he, I, I liked him when he was in the uh The Prophecy with Christopher Walken I think he played Lucifer uh, and he did a really good job. I remember watching him, and I, I was like, "This guy was going to be a star." And I don't know if he's ever if he's really become a star. I mean, I don't. Again, I don't. I don't really think there are people that see movies because Viggo Mortensen's in, in it. But he is an, an, a, a tremendous actor with a very very wide range, and he's he's 
he's hot. I'm not gonna lie, he's really hot, especially when he plays uh, um, whatever his name was in Lord of the Rings. Uh, Geeks unite and you know, tear you know, tear my limb, tear me limb from limb. I forgot what his name was. Uh, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just let's just look it up. Because that's what that's how we roll here, uh, fellowship of the rings. Okay, uh, what's his name? Come on, come on, Vigo. Aragorn. Thank you, Aragorn. A you know, I I have been a big fan of Vigo Mortensen, and uh, when he played Aragorn, he he any scene that he was in, he was just he 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 owned the screen. You know, and you know, Elijah Wood technically, I would say, is is the star of the movie, but really, I have to say that Viggo Mortensen was the one that I when I when I look back at Lord of the Rings, there are two people that I there are three characters that I remember, and they're not Elijah Wood's character, which is Frodo. Uh, there's Samwise Genji, played by Sean Astin, also known as Mikey from the Goonies. Uh, there's uh, Gandalf, played by Sir Ian McKellen. You shall not pass. And then there's Aragorn, played by Viggo Mortensen. You know Orlando Bloom, yeah, but like you know, he made so many shitty movies after that. I just I can't I can't I, I'm not I'm, we're just gonna skip over Orlando Bloom. Um, anyway, but uh, getting back to racism, um, and this and and I'll be honest this goes to show my own ignorance and my it also shows my lack of memory um uh I said to my wife oh my god our next guest uh and I'll introduce her in a minute uh is the first woman of color I've had on the show and my wife was like looked at me like are you fucking kidding me and I was like what she goes what about Fardosa and I was like oh shit shit how could I forget that what's wrong with me so, I was wrong, and our, uh, our, our guest today, I've watched her do stand-up, not live, unfortunately, I have not been to one of her shows, she's going to be performing in Mankato a little bit later tonight, um, and uh, her name is Khadijah Cooper, and she, I've, I've watched her videos, and, uh, and, and I've kind of followed her, and we've been planning this, uh, this interview for months. I'd say months, and uh, I'm I'm just I'm just really excited to to have her on the show. She re she's really excited about, to meet my wife. I don't know. I like I said, you know, my wife's gonna be here, just letting you know. And she's like, oh my god, I'd like to meet her. I can't wait to meet her too. And I'm like, I told my wife that. My wife is like, really? Why why she want to meet me? But anyway, but I'm 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 really excited to have her on the show. And you know, you know she's she's a hilarious comedian uh she is african american um <clears throat> and uh i think i think we might talk about that as you know just racism and and we're going to we, we're just going to cover the whole gamut uh i hope you guys enjoy it uh i will be bringing Khadijah cooper on here in just a few moments and enjoy the show Okay, well, we got Khadijah Cooper on uh, on the air with us. How are we doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. You made it all the way over from the cities. How that how that go for you? Did you guys have to drive through some really shitty weather? It was good. I did yeah. reflect though, because I had texted you like, "Oh, if you don't can't make it, the roads are bad." I was like, "I'm from Minnesota. It's yeah. fine. I do I know. This. I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. And then I was I I prayed a lot on the way you here. Did, you prayed yeah. a lot. Yeah, all right. Just to make sure, but it was it was good. The plows were out doing what they've been waiting to do. All right, all right. So it was good. So uh, I was I was watching some of your videos, and uh, we're you and I we had one huge thing in common. What is it? We're both only ch children. That's probably the most important, don't you think? It, it is. It is. 
I, uh, I, my wife gives me so much shit over being an only child. Like, I, it's like, and, and the whole thing about my birthday, I'm like a huge, uh, I'm totally a birthday diva. Like, mm. when it's my birthday, like. I definitely. It's, yeah. What's no, your, when's your birthday? March 24th. Okay, so you're coming up. Yeah, so you're coming. like I'm revving up for it. Yeah. Good for you. No. I'm not no, <laughs> I, no, it's good. Getting older is great. Um, I'm. Exactly the same way. I like to celebrate my birthday. I think it's just a nice way to focus on yourself. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like a the nice... one day that's for you. <laughs> or the month or, you know, yeah. whatever. However if, you want to celebrate. If, if, if I took the whole month, my wife would probably divorce me. <laughs> like, I know. I'm, I'm insufferable enough as it is for one day. <laughs> <laughs> I have good friends and a good boyfriend that puts up with it. Yeah. But I'm not shy about it. I let people know, like, this is important. My birthday's important to me. Put it down there. If you cannot handle it, I am not the one for you. Like you have, I have to be very clear yeah, about my that. My parents right away. are really weird about my birthday. Like, like, like. I remember like distinctly, we had like a huge fight one night. I mean, I didn't fight because I'm, I'm just like timid and like I'm this little Jewish kid, you know. You know, like okay, okay. but like, like they were screaming at me like one night, like the night before my birthday, and I was just huge traumatic experience right of being screamed at and then the next morning is my birthday and like it was like the stepford wives like, <laughs> like they were just like they're like hi good morning happy birthday how are you doing today yeah and like the fuck just happened here <laughs> like and nobody's I, gonna talk about this so yeah so um so you know jumping into it like you know, obviously, you've been. I, I mean, I, like I said, I was watching you perform. Why comedy? Like, what what made you decide to just? Uh, we're just gonna jump in. Why? 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 Why comedy? Um, I've been around comedy actually, like my whole life. My mom did stand up, yeah. and um, did she really? Yeah, she she did stand up for a really long time. She'll still do it every once in a while, but that's awesome. Not as much anymore. So I was like eight years old at these comedy clubs yeah. with you know, comedian and just like. Feeling like, oh my god, my mom is famous. Like, yeah. you know, being a little kid and you're What's like, What's her name? Cece Cooper. Cece, okay, all right. I'll yeah. Her up. So, I've always loved comedy. It's always been in my life. I just remember being at comedy shows from a really, really young age. Yeah. And I've always wanted to try it. Yeah. But it's terrifying. It is terrifying. It is the so worst. scary. And I kept too. putting it off. I kept putting it off like, okay, next year I'll do it or next year I'll do it or maybe it's not the right time. Right. And then I was just like, 2018, I was like, okay, my New Year's resolution is to do an open mic. Right. So I like wrote some jokes. I like went up there, like twerked for like 10 seconds. I blacked out. And then it was over. <laughs> then I like came to. You blacked. Yeah, it was like an out of body experience. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I felt too. Like, like the like the first time, like I think I did. I, I've always said I, I did decent the first time. Right? Yeah, I did too. And it I, was it was beginner's luck, I think. You know, yeah. For me anyway. And then the second time, like I went up there, like I I made the mistake of looking into the front row, mm. and like it was like they're like dead uh, like. Doll's eyes staring, just staring up at, at me. you. And I'm just like, yeah. I was like, okay, I gotta go. Bye. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like that's the worst. Some people aren't laughing at yeah. your jokes. At but here's the thing that I've learned, and I learned that like comedy is really subjective. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You could do the same jokes ten times, and half those times they'll be knocked out of the park. Right. Like people are belly laughing, and half times you do, and people are like, I don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah. So what I figured out is like you really have like I like to watch the room. Yeah. If I don't go first, I like to watch what people are laughing at, what people sure. are connecting to, what kind of crowd is it? Smart. And I try to like I go in with a set, but then I always try to like adjust, right? Sure. Now if I'm first, I just go up there and do my thing, you yeah. know, and just have to be like, well, well the chips where they fall. Where they yeah, are. Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, I'm I'm really observant. I mean, and, maybe I need Jesus. <laughs> is that, that's what it is. Maybe. Jesus will bring comedy in your life. I usually uh, open up with, hey, have any Jews in the audience? And that's, that usually gets a laugh. That's popular, it's, yeah. It, because, I mean, it's it's fucking Mankato. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're like unicorns here. I mean, it's like, you yeah. know, there's, there are no Jews. Oh, my God, I saw a black person on my way here. Really? Yeah, I was very disappointed in the Jewish? experience. Uh, probably not. Oh, okay. So maybe um, they had the Sammy Davis Jr. Thing no, I don't think so. I was, like, trying to get over 
and the person didn't let me in. I looked over, it was like a black person. I was like, that is not how we do, th- like, you should have yeah. let me in. That's how people are, like, within in awesome. Nebraska. They, they see Jews, and they, they're just like, wow, there's a Jew in Nebraska? I'm like, there's actually a pretty decent population of Jews in Nebraska. So, um, I live in St. Louis Park, so there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of Jewish people in my community. Yeah. Yeah. And the first time I went to the Cub Foods in St. Louis Park is the first time I ever saw a kosher section. Oh, really? In a grocery store. Yeah. Wow. See, my wife would really love you because you said Cub Foods, and I'm still like, I, I still call it, oh, we're going to Cubs. Is and it Cubs? No, it's Cub. You're absolutely right. My well, how wife, many are you going to in a day where you're calling it Cubs? Uh, it's, well, <laughs> not, there's one right down the road. So you're uh, just going to one Cub? Actually, yeah, they're, they're two because I take my, my father-in-law to another one. But I, I go to, I, so I go to Cub frequently because that's where I take my father-in-law grocery shopping because he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a, a ride and he lives in, like, yeah, like, you know, he used to live in assisted living. Now he just lives in his, does his own thing. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but no, like, uh, I, I've always called it Cubs, and then, and Amanda c- corrected me, is, is corrected me, and I was always like, it's Cub Foods. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and she's like, no, you don't understand, it's Cub Foods. And I'm like, uh, okay. Just drop the S. Jeez. Oh. Make your wife happy wife, yeah, happy wife. happy wife, happy wife. They don't really consider happy groom, happy room, though, do they? Well, but, no. Yeah, no. They that's, don't. That's, that just doesn't factor in. No, but you could get that started. Hashtag yeah. happy groom, happy yeah. room. What does that mean exactly? Like, what What would, What would? room are you... The, the room I'm in? Perfect. <laughs> happy groom, happy <laughs> whatever room, room I'm right. in. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't work. I've I've, I've tried that. You tried some, it? It's yeah, I work in customer on. service. Okay. I've tried that, you know, because they'll be like, happy wife, happy wife. And yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, but, well, the woman. If I talk to a female customer, they'll be like, they'll be like, yeah, my 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 husband does what I say he does, and blah 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 blah, blah you know. And I'll be like, hey, have you ever heard of happy room, happy groom, or happy groom, happy room? And they're like, no. Yeah. And they get just really serious. I'm just like, okay. Well, okay. Ugh. I gotta stop doing it. Well, I, I mean, I just that's, if that's a shtick, that's gotta stop. If I you're mean. committed to it, keep going, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find it. You know, don't yeah. give up on it. So. Um, so you've got a fourteen-year-old. A She's uh, fifteen. Now. Fifteen. Yeah, now. she okay. turned fifteen in January. Right. Yeah. Just no, creeping. that's okay. That's creeping. No, that's good. It's research. Don't it's say re- creeping. Like right. we're researching. <laughs> it's research. I'm about to be like, get your sk- get my coat. <laughs> get the lotion, ma. <laughs> 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 no, gotta go. It's been fun. Yeah, no, um, honey, I'm you in, got the chainsaw. I'm in Mankato. <laughs> if you don't hear from me. Um, the addresses. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's okay. They, they, they. I'm just. I've, I've been. I get really excited about my guests. So, yeah. No, I, 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 I try not to sound like a complete idiot when I have guests on, and I usually end up doing it. Anyway. No, you're, you're. Am I exact, doing okay? You're doing, doing good. Doing good. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Right, good. So, so you've got a, you got a 15 year old girl. Yeah. How's, how's, what's, I mean, how's that? I mean, how's that going? <laughs> How is it going? I mean, well, um, she, she, I mean te- that's, that's, she's a teenager now. Yeah, she's a full-blown teenager. She's Oof. in it. I started doing comedy to cope. Yeah. Um, oh, really? <laughs> is that right? Uh, she just, I mean, almost in a blink of an eye, she went from, like, my little baby to, yeah. like, this hormonal, like, borderline scary. Monster. Yeah. Exactly. It's, a, she, like, a monster. Yeah, but like sometimes it. really sweet, and then it makes me question her <laughs> and you know every day is uh walking on eggshells but she ultimately she's a good kid oh, that's good. um and i think it's because she's just enough afraid of me <laughs> just, you know what i mean like she knows that at any moment any that we need to talk about kevin bullshit no <laughs> like at any moment she knows i will i could punch her in the face and like not feel bad for it you know what i mean like old school style like don't get it twisted like i love you but like yeah. And then, yeah. you know, kids, well, I'll call the police. Like, you can call them. Like, a nine jail will be peaceful. It's fine. <laughs> I can survive. My mom once threatened to put me in my head through a wall. So, you like, punch Yes, me but, God bless but, her. But, yeah, well, I don't know. Or maybe not. No, maybe. violence is, we violence. don't want to, we don't condone violence. I've never had Only to punch when her. it's completely necessary. Yeah, but the fear yeah. of it is enough. Yeah. The fear that she knows that I will yeah, do exactly. it is enough. The I've wooden never... spoon itself is not that scary, but like the actual no. thought of the wooden spoon striking your flesh is 
is a scary yeah. the thought yeah. yeah yeah that and you know the, the, the like even the belt it's just like you know like you're just like it takes too long to get you know I'm at the size now where, <laughs> where I don't need to wear like, my God, pants are staying up hold just hold on fine. this will take a second yeah oh, no God. I got two hands ready to go <laughs> so so as you know like I was gonna say my my wife and I um uh, and I don't know how much you uh, talk to any other comedians that I've interviewed. Uh, no, my wife and I—we don't have kids. We've been trying to, we've been trying to uh, uh, start a family. Mm-hmm. We're, we're we try we're trying to adopt, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were gonna we almost we we had a failed adoption about two years ago, actually a little bit more than two years ago, and we were gonna adopt this African American, uh, um, half African American and half. Native American child. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and so you know, my, that it's just like my 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 parents are just like stuck in their old ways of thinking. You know. Yeah. Like this is like my this is an example of my mom. My I think we're we as in white people are are guilty of completely institutional racism. Like we're. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just. I now we're getting deep. We're Let's getting do deep. it. I know. Yes. I know. I, I, you yeah. Know, I hope that's okay because I yeah, just, I, I can talk about act. it. I saw your act, and you're like, you, you know, with your boyfriend, you're like, now nah, yeah. I got to start d- d- dating more white people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So no. Um, There's but, context to that. Yeah. There's um, context. It's not just yeah, like I'm just wanting to date white. Yeah. She's checking her watch like a shit. No, I didn't even see what time it is. We're good. We got plenty of time. But no, like. Like I remember, like the first time my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, Jesus Christ, is uh, I don't do any post-production just for the record. Oh, uh, so this is all it's happening. Rolling yeah. live, I like it. Yeah, where it's like, uh, so my my mom, like the first time she met my father-in-law, who's like, like just this open-hearted, bleeding-heart liberal, mm-hmm. you know, my mom is a conservative. She voted for Trump. Mm-hmm. I did not, just for the record. Everybody has their yeah, own yeah, exactly. political but views. She, uh, yeah, true. But then she said she referred to the civil rights movement as that. Oh, that whole black thing. Mm. And I like, I I I, I shit myself. Yeah. In the restaurant. I was like, yeah. The I, thing that yeah. I've noticed, or you know, just being a black woman and just kind of being as woke as possible and just living in this experience is that when right. people who are marginalized or don't have that experience, right. it's really hard for them to understand and kind of step into that place where they understand how systemic racism works. Right. I mean, there is, you know, time and time again, factual stuff that is important. Like civil rights isn't just a black people thing. It's a human it's a right. Human rights. It's a human rights yeah. issue. Yeah. And, um, you know, right. everyone has their can have their opinion about it, but the thing is, is that if we have this nation that's supposed to stand for, you know, like they say on the statue, but bring us your poor, your wounded, your yeah. this, your that, yeah. that's everybody. Yeah. And when we're taking certain groups of people and continuously setting up systems where they can't right. thrive, what are people supposed to think? Right. You know, that don't really have it affect them when you just watch it on the outside. Sure. I can understand why somebody on the outside would be like, oh, that's a black thing. Like, they, you know, like, right. they see those stereotypes play out in the news and in media and all those things. But I also stress people, no matter what side you're on, to really dig deep and find the right. truth. Yeah. Because when you think about the truth and you think about, like, the his- history of African Americans in this country... Right. There, there is no disputing right. that from the beginning we were set up, right. even to fail, right. even after you know people were free and there was like slavery was done. There right. was sharecropping, which kept them connected to the plantation, right. right? And then after that, like people were like, "Oh, slavery! What you know? Once that's over, it was good." Lincoln there, ended. Lincoln ended slavery. Lincoln ended slavery, but what that ended up with was. Jim Crow, when when black people got free, mm-hmm. you know, there's a great quote um, by Dr. I can't think of her name, but it's a great quote that she said. This is not, I just want to make sure that this is not, I didn't say this. Um, mm-hmm. That when black people got free, black people didn't start a vigilante group to, against white people. Right. But white people started a vigilante group right. against black and brown people, and they're called the KKK. Right. Right? Yeah. Because of fear. Right. And when you think about, like, 
how does racism affect right. black people and how does racism affect white people? The only way that racism truly affects white people is fear. Yeah. That's really what it is. It is, yeah. And, and it, that's embedded in their culture, just like the things that are, you know, the systemic racism is embedded in our, in our culture. Right. And, you know, and that's the thing, like, you know, before the whole trying to adopt, you know, like, because we, we take, we've joined these, like, adoption support groups mm-hmm. where, you know, we've gone to panels about, you know, transracial families yep. and stuff like that. You know, like, it, it is so eye-opening. Yeah, absolutely. To, 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 it's like, you know. Because to a certain extent, you're almost, you almost have to look at yourself, look you know, look in the mirror and be like, okay, what am I doing? Yeah. That's that's you know, in, as far as in, you know, institutional racism, you know, like what you know, white privilege, yeah, you know, that kind of thing, and that you know, and I just, um, you know, that it's just it's just something that I um, I never really thought of until yeah. I you know, once you start thinking about the process of, of having kids and the the idea that you may have a child that that's not you yeah. know the same color you know skin color i mean you know and that and that's the thing i was scared of with, with my dog is because my dog is uh, sadly kind of usually kind of racist mm-hmm. and i we think it's because the, his last owners um we don't know if they puppy were, racism needs puppy, to stop puppy today. racism needs to stop, needs to yeah. stop. yeah they're um, we're gonna start picketing <laughs> Well, uh, make he, but for for what it's worth, he does he does attack all of skin people as well. So he didn't attack me. He didn't. I know. So like, I maybe think he, he smelled the suburban St. Louis Park on me. He was like, <laughs> mm, she's definitely dating a white dude. We're not gonna bark. Maybe that's what it is. I yeah. just like that just comes out of me. So as as far you know, and like, and I was talking to to my wife, and 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 this is certainly not on purpose, but you are the the. My, my second person of color that's been on the show, uh-huh. which I don't know that it's not intentional. It yeah, just, it just happens. Yeah, like you well, said. you live far from the city, right. and, and you live in a place of like, yeah, as, you, you were know, like, you were like, oh, I saw a black person on the way here. It's like, yeah, like, and you I were it was genuinely surprised. I had to note it. Yeah. I had to tell somebody. Yeah, I well, wanted it to be you. I was gonna. Oh, well, I was gonna say. I was like, <laughs> I was, I was like, if I was, I thought the punchline was gonna be like she was in the car with you, but like, yeah, <laughs> no, my friend would see it. She was in the car with me. She was equally as shocked. So she was like, "What?" So I was gonna say like, um, so you do have a nine to fiver though. I yeah, was, I do. Yeah, and you're a, a sex ed teacher. I got bills. Yeah, I teach hey, sex. We all, yeah. I don't know. I Comedy see. ain't paying the bills. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I teach sex ed, which I love, and, you know, getting able to talk to young people about their sexual health is so important, yeah. and what I've noticed is that adults also need to yeah. have conversations about their own sexual health, because there's not standardized sex ed, some people didn't get help, I mean, there's no yeah. way of really knowing. Yeah. And and kids these days, there's so much less conservative than they used to i mean kids i mean kids are like yeah we were talking about uh that the other day like just thinking about snapchat and you know because there was this thing at a school where there was a bunch of pictures going out and like it was like in the lunchroom you could i don't have an iphone but there's like an iCloud share i share iphone something sharing it's something with, sharing something. something yeah they're sharing a whole lot but it's something with iphones that you could share it and yeah. in the lunchroom like during lunch, like all these naked pictures are like right. going around, and I'm like, oh my gosh! Thank God I lived in a generation that if you wanted to show someone your boobs, you had to flash them. You, you had to go to their you face. To to, yeah. You had to have the go guts. To Mardi Gras. <laughs> you had to open up your shirt and let it go, or you just mooned them. Like you just had to like yeah, more than like we had guts back in the day. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I. But then if anybody said it happened, you could just be like, no, it didn't. Who saw? Nobody yeah, saw. I had it. a really bad joke one time when I did stand up and it, like a lot of people got offended like it's not about race it's not about like you know sex or whatever but, oh, okay. but this, this gal it, it's kind of really like we were brave we we did we did a lot of things the things we did we were they were much more practical stunts like yeah. you know whereas now it's all technology based like yeah like I had a friend her daughter had this like large gash on her hand and mm-hmm. I was like I was like oh my god what what the fuck happened? And she was like, I didn't, actually I did say what the fuck happened. Yeah, sometimes you gotta cuss yeah. it. Yeah, and she mm. was like, oh, it was the pencil eraser challenge. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what? 
what she rubbed a eraser on yeah, her. Yeah, and I, I had ex- she had explained it. I said, "What what on earth is the fucking pencil eraser challenge?" And she tells me about. It. She goes, "You oh, you just use a pencil eraser and you just rub it until you see how hard you know hot and like how much it'll burn and hurt your." I was like, "Girl, in my day, we used razor blades to cut ourselves." Oh shit. <laughs> Her her mom is not happy. <laughs> who's also like my best friend. Like she was like, "How you don't say that to her?" I'm like, no. oh, you, <laughs> I was like, yeah. you pussies. You, you, yeah. You, you and how's that bitch. adoption process going? Yeah. It hasn't gone through yet. No, okay. We, 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 we. Makes sense. It's been two years. It's been two years. Yeah. Yeah. Been, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I I put in our dear birth in a letter that I do stand stand up comedy, but it's it's the podcast has become. I don't do stand-up comedy anymore, and not because of <laughs> not because of that joke, uh, but it was before it became like this adult, the adult comedy night for adults at, at the Coffee Hag. Yeah, that's where I'm going. I, yeah. How far is that from here? Oh, it's like... Oh, like, I shouldn't be talking no, about that now. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. It's all right. That's a few blocks from here. Oh, yeah. so it's close. Perfect. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, you basically get on to River, you take, you go straight down... No, a few minutes is fine, it's because I don't know any of the yep. street names. Yep, so anyway... And uh, I've only ever performed at the Coffee Gag. Yeah. So, you know, and that it was, and it was before it became the, the adult comedy show yeah. for adults. And uh, so I had many a family walk out on, on my on my. Act. That is the most. So there's a lot of comedy shows that happen in breweries, right? Okay. And that is the most uncomfortable thing mm-hmm. to have kids when you're trying to do comedy. Oh yeah, yeah. Comedy is not for kids unless it's. Comedy for kids. I was gonna say, it has to be Sinbad spe- or like Sinbad, Sinbad is actually pretty clean. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. don't and then also don't bring your kids to a brewery. Yeah, or there's a, no food. Right. They're just sitting on the floor playing with all the toys and that you brought them. Yeah, but in all fairness, it was it is a coffee shop. So. Yeah, that's a coffee shop, so that but, makes sense. But here's the thing, like it's eight PM. Like why? Why do you got your kids in, in the, you know, but getting them juiced up for the night? Yeah, exactly. Like that's well, not what smart is, parenting. That's exactly. And so, but no, like one night I had like the whole cast is like seventh heaven, like you know, like <laughs> sitting in the audience, and like they were like to Esther who who used to run the show. They were like, "Is he gonna be like this all night?" <laughs> and like she was like, "Yes." And they were like, yeah. Like they were, they were gone. And then there was a whole earmuff situation. Like she, the mom was like, "Oh my god, Jesus, we need to get out of here." Right yeah, now. they prayed a lot that night. I'm sure. Yeah, they, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. You start talking about like fertility treatments and stuff like that. Mm. That, that you know, it's usually frowned upon by by moms with eight year old kids. I'm sure it is. Yeah, you, but the kids gotta learn. At the some kids time. gotta learn. You know, I, maybe I was doing my own version of you know sex ed. Yeah, know, but, but sure, it, we but, call it that. <laughs> or being just really a creepy adult. <laughs> creepy no, adult you were doing you. The kids shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Get them out of here. So, but yeah. So as far as being like, a, I mean, sex ed teacher. I mean, is there a certain like grade? I mean, up to a certain grade, or is it just like you know, is yeah. it pretty much fifteen year olds like 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 at, at that age or? Uh, so the way that it works where I work is that the majority is high school, middle school. Yeah. Um, age kids, but we do go as young as like fourth grade, which is just like puberty sure. and like, you know, like your body is gonna change yeah. if it hasn't. It's very sweet, and then all the way up until like um, first two years of college, because we have a yeah. clinic as well. So we also do services up until someone's twenty six. Oh wow! So, but twenty six is still considered adolescence. Is that right? Well, some depending on who you ask. But well, or what? I, I, I probably was. I didn't at. really become an adult until I was thirty. But that was also yeah. because when I got into recovery You're... from alcohol and oh drugs, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So that actually, you know, that helps being sober. Well, one thing they, yeah, I mean, one thing that you learn in sobriety uh, is that like usually, like the the time you start using drugs is like the time where you're basically your your adult. You stop the growing as an adult essentially. Mm. It basically it 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 slows down the process. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I don't know a lot about like drug use, but I know a little bit about development in the brain. And right. I mean, people's brains are still developing into their early twenties. Yeah, you know that yeah. prefrontal 
cortex. Yeah. Look at that. Boom. Oh, Nailed it. Yeah. Thought about that word three times before I actually said it. <laughs> Make sure I said it right. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I I just I'm like, yeah, well, brain doesn't develop very good. Um, yeah, but so you're doing great for yourself. You have a wife. Yeah, yeah. I mean, home. She was, and she was my wife during that. Uh, the uh, oh, so you, that. yeah, okay. So it was the first year of our marriage okay. that I I got into sobriety. That was a that was an interesting year of marriage. I'm and, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. August thirtieth. August thirtieth. This year will be nine years. So oh, good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. I, it's not me. It's uh, the the age, the higher power. You know, God. So, yes, Good. I call I call him higher power because okay. I, I I have some issues with religion, but you know. Oh, okay. But you know, but I'm Jewish, you know. So I mean, at the same time, it's like I can't really get out of that. It's gonna be with you. <laughs> it's it. The, may the Judaism be with you always. Okay. You Did know? you just give it to me? Because it looked no. Like I was okay. Like, you know, may the force be with you. <laughs> okay. Got yeah, it. Yeah. I was I was doing a Star Wars reference. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you were. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Passing it on we're, to me. We're, we're, it's, it's okay. We're happy. This is, I love this, it. This, like I said. No, I'm just being funny. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you are being funny. Yeah. So you're in a relationship. I am. Yeah. And you, you mentioned your show, he, He's White. And, he is. And uh, so how long have you guys been together? Um, Just a little over a year. Wow. Yeah, so it's new. Yeah. We went from zero to 100 real quick. Okay. So it was kind of like we met. We were like, yes, this is it. And like, yeah, we moved in together. It just happened boom, boom, boom. That's, very fast. Honestly, sometimes when you know, you know. That's the thing. When you know, you know. And I think for a long time I was hung up like, you got to like take the time and you have to blah, blah, blah. But look, I was, I was 35. I didn't have, I don't got the time. Like, I'm trying to lock some shit up quick because things are starting to sag. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, there's only so many push ups that this bra can take. <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta lock something down real quick, okay. and it just happened that. I thought you literally meant push ups, like you were doing push ups. Hell and, no! And, and, then I, and then I realized, oh. <laughs> hell it's hell a, no, see, push ups are the male, the, That's like the. Like, Good the, for which you. Which is weird because I don't really exercise, so I like the no, fact that I actually. No, it was 100%. Went straight to exercise is not. Really kind of an anomaly. Do, <laughs> I love that you like are looking at me and you still thought push ups like exercise. I that's like, nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Or my, you need a new prescription. I do, I do my best. One or the other. Yeah, I, you know, I, yeah, no, I definitely, I'm starting to get spasms in my eyes. Okay. So, that yeah, makes sense I, why I, you yeah. assumed I would do push ups. These, these Zenny uh, glasses didn't last very long. Damn and, it. Yeah, so, but no, um, no, the same thing with my wife. Like, we, uh, we, we met online first, uh, and uh, we met New Year's Eve later that year, and then, like, within, by May, we were engaged. You know exactly, and like we only met because she was in St. Paul and I was in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh wow! You know, and so we only met like one time in New- like we were there five times. You know, we hung out like at New Year's, made it a fish, you know, official like a couple days after New Year's. Mm-hmm. We said, okay, let's do this in Seattle Cove, mm-hmm. long distance thing, and then uh, like in March she came in to visit me, and then in May. Uh, we went and looked for engagement rings. No, no, March. Sorry, March. We uh, we she came to visit me in Omaha, and then like I think later on we went to Omaha uh, to Des Moines to mm. pick up an engagement ring, and then May first I proposed. Yeah, I love that you're really thinking. You could tell me I'm any really, month, no, and I would I'm have like, no idea. If you're telling the truth. You're no. like it was May. No, it was. And it's really funny because Amanda will never listen to this either. She doesn't listen to my podcast. She doesn't. She, yeah, not really. No. Yeah, unless that makes it, sense. Unless. It's like something where like I'm talking about like, like you know something like that interests her, you know? Yeah. Like, like occup- she's an occup- pediatric occupational therapist. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so she deals with you know people on the spectrum and yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah, so we uh, like like for instance like one of my guests in May is uh, this really world renowned occupational therapist who's like, oh who like you know talks about. PTSD and oh, yeah, yeah and good. I have absolutely no idea what the hell I'll be talking about her. To, <laughs> well, you better talk to yeah, your well, wife. Well, that's the thing. She's yeah, Amanda. She she actually wants to sit in, and I'm just like, oh, so now you want to sit in because <laughs> it's about it's about okay. But I, she I, wants to share her expertise. She wants to shoot, and 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 
she, I probably will need her expertise because <laughs> I'm going to be like, Dirty. Yeah, good. And then the, just and have the, cute cards. And then, and she'll just like and then, yeah, exactly. them and then the one, and then the, oh, the person I'm interviewing will be like, Are you sure she's not one of your patients? Uh, <laughs> so, sorry, that's terrible. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that lady never hears this one. All right, anyway. Um, so, I mean, do you. I, I wrote notes down, so it's. I, I, I normally don't, but I just didn't know. Uh, oh, yeah. So. <clears throat> So as far as your, um, I mean, did, since your mom did stand up, I mean, she, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming she's very supportive. Of, yep. Uh, I mean, it, did she want that for you? I mean, is she, I mean, did she groom you or was it just sort of like, did she basically say, yeah. go for it? Um, she definitely didn't groom me. That's so, f- oh my God, when you said that, it just made me think of like a pimp. Okay. Cause like that's what pimps oh, uh, do wow. when when they we went straight to hustle and flow here. I know that's like, that's man exa- and a dog. That's exactly what like the first thing that popped into my head because that's what pimps do to like girls to get them oh, no. to like turn drugs. Um, <laughs> so my, yes, that's exactly what I meant. So uh, no, uh, yeah, my mom sold me for jokes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, she she didn't. I think uh, she's known that I always wanted to do comedy. Yeah. You know, we always, like, me and my mom yeah. are just, like, a cut up together. Yeah. She's just so naturally funny and, like, yeah. goofy. and. Um, but, yeah, she's 100% supportive. The first time I ever did comedy, I didn't tell anyone else, but she came, mm-hmm. you know. And so we both did some time that night. And so, yeah, it was really good. And every once in a while, me and my mom will do a mother-daughter show at... Royal Comedy Theater okay. in Hopkins. That, that's awesome. Yeah, so she'll headline that feature for her, so yeah, those cool. are fun. You know, kind of like every quarter-ish, just kind of. No, that, I think that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes she's like, we should do all this stuff together, and I'm like, I don't want to. I just become like a very bratty only child, right. like, I don't want to. <laughs> this is my time. Get it now. Because then... What happened was everyone is like, oh, Cece's your mom. And I was like, God damn it. You know, because my mom knew a lot of people already in the uh, Twin Cities doing like comedy. Sh- didn't I didn't want to. Yeah, I d- you Got know, it. like we both sure. do comedy and like she sure. is so funny. But I just, you know, sometimes it's, it's better now. But when it was happening for like kind of a lot, like, oh, I just found out that you're Cece's daughter. Or, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's great, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I definitely wanted, you know, my mom also was like, okay, I'll let you kind of get out there and do your thing right. and figure out what you yeah. want to do with comedy. And the thing I think that's really different about my mom's comedy journey and my comedy journey is that, like, she started doing comedy when she was doing a lot of other things like mm-hmm. she was a single mom she was in school she was working really hard and then she was trying to have this hobby on the side mm-hmm. and I think just juggling all of those things you know like you have to be like what's important you know do right. I want to continue getting this master's degree or do I want right. to like do comedy obviously she decided you know right. she got a master's degree and I think sometimes comedy had to take a back seat to that yeah. but for me because I was 35 and kind of like in my career and like felt in a good place with it. You know, my daughter was old enough and was kind of like, I don't care, go like be, a, yeah, leave the house. <laughs> but yeah, that's sweet. Like, go for it, mom. Go live your dream. No, she's like, get out of my room, leave. I don't care. And I was like, okay, bye. So I think I just the timing was really right for me to like go out and hit yeah. the scene like really, really hard. Yeah. And kind of let people know that I'm serious about it. Yeah. Have you have you ever been on a podcast before? Uh yeah, I have. Really? This is my second podcast. Oh hey, yes. Cool. Oh, that's so cute. Why? I'm just kidding. No. Listen, the, mm-hmm. my second. That's good. This is this is good. My first one, um, was this lady named Rahel, and we kind of talked about, you know, kind of the stuff, comedy stuff Not institutional too. Institutional racism. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't get into institutional racism. We didn't Sorry. get deep. We didn't. She doesn't have a racist dog. I mean, like, I feel like we really talked, we connected on a human level. I, 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 hope, here. I hope we're doing okay. Yeah, yeah, we're doing great. No, this is fun. I love this. So this is, um, yeah, my second podcast. I really came late to the podcast game. Yeah. Like, I work with a lot of millennials and a lot of younger people. Yeah. And I just, I'm like, 
10 years behind everybody with technology like i really am i try to i try to fake it like oh yeah i know like reddit Mm, i have no idea what the fuck reddit is is that a I don't, don't, I can't, I don't know like, what it is. I don't, uh, I literally have no idea. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm still getting into, I, I'm still trying to figure out. I was telling my wife that I was tweeting people. I uh, no, shot, I, I did no, deactivate my Twitter No, actually, I said, I no, can't. no, this is what I said. I said, I said, that person's Twittering me. And yeah, like, that makes sense. And like, she was like, what? And I was like, I said, that person won't stop Twittering me. And she's yeah. like, you mean tweeting? And I was like, is that what they're is that it? No, I mean because people would just be I mean, just yeah, I have a podcast, but like and the fact that I work for a technology company which I knew never used the name of uh, yeah. I call it the monolith because you mm. know, it's just it, yeah. 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 Uh, I get it. but yeah, it's it's uh you know, it's it's just I for being somebody who works for a company that deals with technology, I'm 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 way behind. I'm yeah, just, I like, don't understand that. Facebook and like I, I still don't get Instagram, and I'm, which is weird, which is ironic. No, I because, get down on me some Instagram. That I get. Yeah, I, I still don't know what people, like, when people send me something, I'm just like, and now this whole thing with Facebook, like, you click on somebody's, like, an image or, like, a, and, like, the line goes across, and you're just, like, you like you have to, like, look at their photo in a certain amount of time, or else it just, like, it goes. Like, in their story? Yeah, in their story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you have to hold it down It's like it a Snapchat now. kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. And I'm just, like, I'm, like, wait, what, 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 why is it doing that? Stop it. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, they just want to give you a little glimpse, a little snapshot, a little peek. And I, and I was talking to my wife, and my wife was, like, you're kidding me, right? And I was, like, no. I was like, she was, like, just hold down on it, and it will stay. And I'm, like. Oh, you're not holding down on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. you're not doing like, I'm just it right. like, Okay. Why are they timing me? Is this, like, are they. Yeah. Maybe they're grooming me for something. That, that. That's probably what's <laughs> happening. They're, they're, they're trying to do some sort of weird psychology thing. Yeah, like they're getting eye or something like that. algorithms and uh, <laughs> cookies and handles so, to groom you. Honestly, yeah. So, you know, you obviously have a job that you love. Yeah, I do. I'm assuming you love it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, doing comedy, would you say that's a dream or is doing what you do... For your nine to five or a dream, or is it both? Is it like an? I think it's like, like a, I think now that I'm in my second year of comedy, I'm figuring out really cool ways to integrate them together. That's cool. um, How so? You know, I have a pitch to a theater in uh, Minneapolis to do a show, mm-hmm. and the premise of the show is basically like me and my coworker. She's not a comedian, but she's super witty and funny, yeah. um, really smart, and it's called Q and A with A and K. So what it is, is that when we teach sex ed, we get these anonymous questions. Yeah. Crazy anonymous questions. If you follow me on Instagram at myblackisbeautiful underscore Khadija, you can see, I post them sometimes. So it's like, just really funny questions. So basically, like, a comedian will get one of those anonymous questions that a kid really wrote, and they'll riff on it, like improv a comedy set for like five minutes or something and then at the end of the show like me and Abby will talk about those questions in like a sexual health like way so kind of like marrying them in that right I really yeah I really want to start trying to get together like women and talking about relationships and intimacy and pleasure and all these other really like fun topics um and doing that so I'm starting to figure out a way to kind of integrate them both together um because i think they work very well together i think my you know you have those jokes where you're like i am bombing i need to pull out my everyone loves yeah (laughs) so my jokes are always those jokes for me are the jokes about my job yeah so like a couple people know if i do those jokes i feel like i'm bombing you know what i mean because i don't do them that much anymore unless i'm like the fucking ship is going down. <laughs> okay, let's talk Ice, about sex. Iceberg, right ahead. Yeah, it's like, turn, turn. Yeah. It's like, grab that fucking locket. Get you a life jacket. <laughs> yeah. Women, women and children first. Yeah, fuck it. Like, take care of yourself. That's yeah. what they say on the plane. Put on your mask before putting on anyone else's. My mask is my sex ed jokes. All right. <laughs> All right, no, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, see, my Judaism is pretty much, the, I mean... I just went in doubt, just be like, yeah, I'm Jewish, and people like just start like they're like, oh, look at the little Jewish gnome up spit up on the stage, you know, <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, like one, you know, like it's just, and like I don't, I don't know, like I just for me, <clears throat> excuse me, 
for me. There we go. I know, right? It's, it's weird. Speaking of, maybe I need to go through puberty. Yeah, that. that's what happened. We experienced it. Congratulations. Um, I know. Exactly, right? No. Um, happy groom, happy room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we fist bumped there. Yeah, we did. All right. So, yeah, no. Um, so, no, I, uh, I just, yeah, I, for me, like, it was just, I liked doing comedy, but, the, like, I have terrible anxiety mm. so like you know i was just like well how can i do comedy because i like talking to people yeah you know i like which is weird because i mean i have like i just have generalized anxiety disorder so mm. you know like doing comedy i mean i like getting laughs you yeah, know, yeah i was on the stage but leading up to it it was just like a whole ordeal for me like, yeah i would just like i i would just feel sick i'd be like and and i i think that's I was talking to Nathan Smesser. Uh, Smesser? Smesser? Um, well, yeah, I know him as Nate. Nate. All right. Nate, Nate <laughs> is, yeah. He is, he's been on the show. I, I should probably know his last name by now. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah. He, uh, but no, like, at the, you know, if you're not, if you don't get that feeling, you're not doing it right. Like, he's, he's like, yeah. every, every time you go up there, you, if you don't get that, that, Butterflies oh, and like, yeah. But for me, like, I was like, I was like, I was like Eminem at the beginning. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> just throwing, yeah, oh my yeah, gosh, yeah. yeah. So I was, just, I just thought to myself, you know, and I was watching, um, I don't know, the show Marin on uh, Netflix. Yeah, okay. like, Mar- you know, um, the comedian Mark Marin. He, he has a, uh, I talk uh, about it every, like, every single fucking podcast. Uh, he's a comedian, yeah, uh, in his 50s. Uh, did a lot of drugs, alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's in recovery. He used to, he does a podcast. He's he's interviewed like all kinds of like famous people. He did like you know he's interviewed like Barack Obama. He's interviewed, oh wow. like, Jennifer Lawrence. You know all kinds, yeah. all kinds of people. You know. And I just thought to myself, that how could I m- marry like just talking to people and getting you know, getting right down and, and yeah. just, you know having conversations with people and 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 do comedy. And I was like, I could do it. I could do a, a, a podcast. Yeah, and I think that's so a great way a fr- for people yeah. to kind of do what they love. And- exactly, and and a friend sent me the mic uh, because they they knew I was interested in doing it, and like he just just said, go go do something with it. You got it now. You have no excuses. Yeah, go for it. And yep. Since October 9th, October 9th, I I've been doing this. So good for you. Yeah. So and and that's the thing. I love interviewing, like. My favorite people to interview really are, are comedians because yeah. I, I love to know about a what I did wrong <laughs> and be you know just the craft and you know like you know how you know how do we get jokes and you know yeah. and, I mean so I mean it's just it's it, it really it, it's it's really come together. Um, I try and do one solo episode where I'm just talking and just kind of talking like fireside chats like oh, you, know, okay. you know and then I try and have one a, ge- a guest yep. for we, like uh, for for about a month I like in January I had a dry spell and I think because everybody's coming down from the holiday yeah. you know and so yeah. so yeah like uh, you know I was just gonna say um, yeah I yeah. Uh, do you have any questions for me or we just want to talk about you. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I would love to talk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, actual, well, yeah, actually, I was, I, was, I was just about to ask, uh, like, who, uh, besides your mom, I mean, do you have any, like, you know, com- comedic, like, heroes, people that you, like, oh. I just want to, like, you know? I think... Who influences your... Who influences my comedy? Yeah. I think... Well, I grew up on, like, Eddie Murphy Raw. Sure. Like, that, like, yeah. kind of time. Uh, Martin Lawrence. Oh, sure. Was, like, Def stellar. Comedy yeah, Deaf Comedy Jam, you oh, know, on geez. HBO. Yes. Yeah. That was something that I really, really loved. I've always loved stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, the Queens of Comedy, some more. Yeah. Um, um, Monique, I think, yeah. was, like, a really pivotal person. Um, especially for black women in comedy. Um, she won an Oscar, didn't she? She might have. For Precious, I think? She, yeah, that probably sounds right. Yeah, I yeah, she, she might have, yeah. Um, and so I think she's, you know, been in the news a lot lately with the, her whole Netflix stuff, sure. with all that. But um, at the end of the day, she is someone that I definitely am like, oh, like she paved the way. Mm. Um, Amy uh, Wong. Yang Wong. Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Yes. Thank you. Um, I love her comedy. Her comedy is really, really funny to me. 
Um, yeah, I you know I'm watching Netflix specials. Me too. I and you know, great. being a comedian watching Netflix specials is a whole different yeah. different kind of ball game. You yeah. know, because it's almost like I'm studying, like. How are they delivering their jokes? When are they pausing? Like, when yeah. are they, like, doing more mm. actions? Okay, this comedian doesn't do a lot of actions, but, like, they take you on this, like, journey. Yeah. Or, like, how long, you know, because some comedians are, like, punchline, 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 tag, tag, tag. And some comedians are, like, you take them through a story. Some comedians are, like, tell you the story of their life and have funny moments yeah. and, you know, kind right. of do that whole thing. And I just think comedy is so different and there's yeah. space for everybody that's the sure. thing that i love about comedy is like there's literally space for everybody yeah and um i was gonna say it's just really sad for me because my favorite comedian was louis ck and oh. then, fuck. Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people felt like that a lot of people was like dude let, let down you're like, fucking dicks yeah like and oh. like even the, like my, my therapist i like he had like a, a sheet of paper that has like a quote from louis ck saying when you hurt somebody, if you hurt somebody, you don't get to tell that person that you didn't. <laughs> you know, and I was like, I was like, that is brilliant. And like, you know, yeah. and then I come back like like the week after the shit hits the fan for Louis, and like, I'm just like, I, I, I'm like, you had to take that down, didn't you? And he's like, he's like, yeah. There's just like a, like a square. Yeah. Like that miss, like what was there? Like, don't talk about <laughs> yeah, was, what was hanging there yeah, before. I, but you know, like, like, and we were, Nate and I were talking, we were just like, he, he's just gonna have to ease ease back into it like you know because after you know at, like Bill Cosby there's no going back that that he's he's in prison there's, yeah, yeah there's I, I mean just, I don't know I think it'd be hard to like for people to post on Facebook like hey everybody going out with my boo tonight gonna go see Louis CK yeah. you know I think it'd be hard for people to be like yeah. oh my god yeah it's, to, it's tough I don't know I just think like stay away from it it's for me it's yeah you know, yeah. you know, there's so many comedians coming up and just like so many different podcasts ways. Too. Yeah, and podcasts. I, I mean, thought it was so special because I had a podcast and then I let, like, I like I, I have my own cards and like I was like, yeah. And then like, like I, I, I like look and I'm like, oh my God, I think my next room neighbor has a podcast. Like, <laughs> like, like, I, I, like I'm not special. Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's, there is a lot of podcasts. Yeah, yeah. there is. I, everybody thinks they have something important to say. Man, and I was like, I'm just kidding. No, and that's what the great thing about podcasts is because if you do have something to say, you can like plug in and like say do it and, and say they, it. And if they don't like it, they don't have to listen. And if they don't like it, they don't have to listen. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's a great outlet for people. I don't have the discipline to do it. You yeah. know, I think it takes a lot of discipline to get people to come to schedule that. Oh, to think about what to say. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's it feels like a lot of coordination. I thought of, I'm trying to think of a title for this episode, because I always do, like, wacky oh. titles. I thought about Hanging with Miss Cooper. Yes! Yeah. Please just do it. Yeah? Yeah. All right. And the only people, only cool people will get it. Will get it, yeah. Only cool people will get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I, I remember that show, Mark Curry, right? Yep, yep. 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 That yep. was good. And then yeah. Living Single, too. Living uh, Single. Khadijah James was on that show, yep. which was, which is really funny, because... You know, we always talk about representation and why that's important. Yeah. And, like, being, I don't know, when I was, that show came out, I was probably in middle school. And... We're about the same. We're all the yeah, same. Yeah, we're, we're all the same age. Yeah. And so I think I was, like, in middle school, and I remember hearing Khadijah come from the TV for the first time yeah. and being, like, Jesus? <laughs> like, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was like, oh, what is happening? And then I went, and there was, like, there was Queen Latifah playing this, like, super badass uh, magazine, like, editor. She's so far. Yeah, and just being yeah. like, oh, my that's gosh, Khadija James. It's like, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, not that it, like, inspired me to, like, write or do yeah, anything. I mean, but okay. I was still, like, mm. yeah. And now people... Now there's a lot of Khadijas. When I was growing up, there wasn't... I felt like I was the only one for a long was, time. Yeah, like, I usually fuck up everybody's name on my on my, on my, on my, on my show. Like, somehow or another, I always fuck up their name, mm. like, the pronunciation of their name. And for, like... And I didn't think Khadija was very easy to pronounce it. Yeah, but, but it's somehow not. I, Nobody's somehow getting I it right. I was just like, oh, it's Khadija. Yeah. And, like, and I was like, really? I've, like... I've 
like seriously, there are people whose names I'm just like so easy to like just butcher. Yeah, butch, that you could easily say, and I and I and I butch them, and then I'm like, oh, Khadija. Yeah, nailed it. First nailed try, it. First knocked try, it all yeah. apart. Good so, work. So, all right, <clears throat> wrapping up because I know you gotta get. We could, I mean, we could talk for another hour. We could hour. talk for hours. Yeah, but I've learned that people have short attention spans. Yeah. Which is why. Did you ever have Comedy Central on your tele- when yeah. you were growing up? Yeah. So I used to watch short attention span theater all the time. And like, oh, because I they. So well. Yeah, it, it, well, I mean, it was basically like they'd have just comedy clips, you know? And like, oh, okay. you know, because people just don't have the attention spans. And it's even, it's gotten even worse, like, as, as time has gone by. People's attention spans are just, like... Yeah, well, because everything's, like, 10 seconds. Yeah, everything's 10 seconds. Like, like it's so weird, because I'll go to the DMV sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, they are like, what's, what's the address to this or that? And I was like, oh, do you have a phone book? And then I realized, oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck, I got a smartphone. Hold right. on. Hold on a second. <laughs> she, she, because she just looks at me like, really? And then, like, I'll get, sometimes I'll get customers. I'll get these old ladies like, can you, op- operator, can you, like, look up this store for me? I'm like, you re- you realize you have a smartphone, right? <laughs> right. And you can just go to Google. Google, what the hell is that? <laughs> what is Google? Like, I called you to tell I, me. Yeah, uh, I have, I had, oh man, uh, I have a crazy old lady story if you want to hear it. I do. Yeah. This, and my, my wife just loves it. Like, I had this crazy old lady, and I talked about it in my stand-up one, one point. It was the last time I did stand-up, actually. But she uh, she was just complaining about, like, I, I, said to, I, I said to her, like, she was having trouble, like, backing up her stuff, or she didn't, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I said, well, do you, do you, are, you, are you near a computer? Do you have a computer? And she's like, computer! <laughs> and I'm like... And I'm like, yeah, I can use that computer. I had a computer once, and I just opened it up, and the first thing I saw were men kissing men and women kissing women. <laughs> Barnyard shenanigans. Oh. And she goes, I took that computer, and I broke it in half, and I threw it in the corner. And I'm like, what? You, you what? And like, you're like 90 years old. Like, are you on steroids? Like, but how did the porn get on her computer? I know. Like, that was like, I'm, how did she I'm, open it up exact, and it was there? She goes, my, she's not telling the truth. I, th- I think, she, like, that's a, and that that's what weird. She was me looking out. at some stuff and clicked uh, the wrong button, and yeah. then it, she didn't like it. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I think. But like, part of me wonders if maybe like her, like maybe her, like her grandkids gave her the computer or something like that, or like it was a mother, hand me down. It was a hand something something. Yeah. Yeah. No, no pun no, intended. <laughs> a little pun. All the puns. All the puns. <laughs> or is it puns or pun? <laughs> puns. Coin toss. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. She like. But yeah, I don't even know why I brought this old. Oh, technology. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's like I don't know. But like the you know the old lady like I don't. It's like my wife just every time I talk about that story she just laughs about it. I'm just like that was hilarious. But it's just like I I, I just there's wanna, so many questions I have. Th- there are so many questions like that and that and you were the first person to ask that question like why on earth was there like the moment she opened up that computer like did yeah. somebody just not like close their like clear their cookies and temporary internet files or no like, it was probably pop ups and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. What yeah. a scary thing for her. Yeah. But she with, with her shitty ass cool. attitude, she probably had it coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she, Granny. Do you want to talk about institutions? She didn't know racism. about oh, yeah. good. But yeah, <laughs> that's what you should have told her. You were like, barnyard shenanigans. You know yeah. what's not a barnyard shenanigans? I was shenanigans? like, I'm pretty sure that's not politically correct. I mean, they're, 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 they're people. They're not, they're not, you know, barnyard animals. They are actual human beings that are doing that. Oh, I really thought she was like, found yeah. some barnyard yeah. animal. Because that's a yeah. That's, that's on there. That's, that's out there. That's a thing too. Yeah. So that's I. I thought she was really like there was, but like it was a barnyard. You, you took that. You went. You took that and went to the literal. Literally, sometimes. yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything maybe, else that was popping up. Maybe. maybe she, now I got barnyard animals in my head. Oh no. Kitty, kitty, I'm sorry. Man. All right. All right. Real quick, wrapping it up. Um. Words of wisdom. What do you say to? <gasps> yeah. Words of wisdom. <laughs> To, to the comedians out there, young youngins, young comedians, out young there. comedians, yeah. words yeah. of wisdom, or just um, any, any, or, or kids that, that you know are everywhere. interested in practicing safe sex. Well, 
you can two, marry the two. These you are, have, this is your opportunity to marry those two. Oh my gosh. Um. Okay. You're special. No, you're not. Um. Here's the you're deal. Not special. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. There is a lot of people doing comedy who are very very funny. There are times that you will go to a show and feel like, or on a date. Mm-hmm. And feel like that maybe that the person that you're on a date with will find somebody better. You might go to a comedy show and feel like the person before you is killing it. But just remember that there's only one you and the people that are for you will be for mm-hmm. you. And that's on the stage, that's in your life, that's all over the place. So right. 100% like I believe in self-reflection is important journaling i feel like is also important especially when you're young and you're trying to figure out who you are and what your values are um but also just be you and be kind and show up on time yeah that's that's yeah basic but you'd be surprised and that my friends was khadijah cooper uh just a lovely lovely woman and uh i i really enjoyed interviewing her i don't I don't know if she expected things to get as deep as they did, but you know, you know, sometimes shit gets deep on this show. <laughs> and uh, but I, I appreciate the fact that she was uh, willing to go along with it and 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 you know put on a serious face as well, you know, and talk about issues as well as you know, you know, be a funny be a funny person that she is. Um, <clears throat> I. Uh, Really, really, uh, I love enjoy. I, I love and enjoy uh, talking to comedians. I, I, you know, and and the fact that I'm, you know, kind of wallowing in this depression right now, it really is a blessing to have, you know, this show where I can interview comedians and and they can make me, you know, I have a good laugh and uh, it cheers me up. So, you know, comedy really for me, it, it is life. I, I, I. I can't do it worth a lick as far as going up stage and doing it, you know. Um, but you know, we do our best. We do our best. We try and make people laugh. Uh, we try and make people smile, and we do it. You know, as always, uh, one day at a time. Yes.